AMD's Navi offerings of the 5700 XT, the 5700, the 5500M and the 5300M in macOS's Catalina 10.15.1 update has been very interesting for me for two very special reasons. Apple has updated Final Cut Pro for macOS Catalina to natively support HDR on supported displays like the new Pro XDR display from Apple itself. The Navi cards bring support for DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.1 which both support 4K 120F PS, as well as HDR Dolby Vision support through the ports directly. These two simultaneous developments as well as the release of Apple's Pro XDR display is no coincidence and as far as Apple's concerned, it does not do coincidences. There are also images of the 5700 XT directly installed in Apple's new Mac Pro on their website. So bearing that in mind, I swapped out my Sapphire Pulse RX 580 for the new stock 5700 XT. A quick overview of the GPU. This is one heck of a cooler. It is hefty and keeps the thermals of the chip and other modules relatively cool. Now, emphasis on the relatively as I'll be doing a follow-up video on that later on. I also say relatively because Apple has not implemented thermal monitoring for the Navi cards, so I guess that'll come in a future update and 10.15.3 seems like the likely candidate for that. I can definitely say one thing, these cards seem to draw some significant power compared to the RX 580 that I was previously using and dissipates much more heat, which this cooler does a very good job of handling. Installing this card wasn't a smooth plug and play operation for me as I'm using the iMac Pro SM BIOS. However, I do hear that the iMac 19,1 or the Mac Pro 7,1 SM BIOSes work much better with this card, which I am planning to use in a future update. So another video on that as well. However, after installing the GPU, I still had to figure out some SSDD patches for the card so it works correctly in my X99 rig. And after that was done, everything was good to go. And believe me when I tell you this, the 5700 XT is fast. Now it isn't Radeon 7 speeds, but it's still fast. Look at these benchmark numbers just for kicks and giggles. First up, we have a 4K ProRes 422 to a 4K H.264 encoded file. The RX 580 takes 20.87 seconds, while the 5700 XT takes just nine seconds, giving us a 131% improvement. The ProRes 422 to 1080p H.265 takes 96 seconds on the RX 580 and only eight seconds on the 5700 XT. 4K ProRes 422 to a 1080p ProRes proxy takes six seconds on the RX 580 and six seconds on the 5700 XT. A 1080p H.265 to ProRes 422 file takes four seconds on the 580 and three seconds on the 5700 XT. 4K H.264 to ProRes 422 takes 19 seconds on the 580 and 15 seconds on the 5700 XT. The Bruce X 5K ProRes 422 test takes 10 seconds on the RX 580 and 5 seconds on the 5700 XT. The Bruce X 5K to 4K H.264 takes 16 seconds on the RX 580 and 10 seconds on the 5700 XT. The RX 580 gets a Luxmark score of 14,567 while the RX 5700 XT gets a score of 27,721, yielding a 47.45% increase. The 5700 XT beats the RX 580 in almost every test except for the ProRes 422 to ProRes proxy test. And I guess this is an expected result because you can run the ProRes to ProRes proxy test on any AMD GPU starting from the RX 560 and it'll give you the same result. So yeah, that is pretty much the baseline there. But what I did not expect was the H.264 and H.265 encoding performance as well as the encoded quality. Let's take a look at my sample video encoded by the RX 580. Here's the same encoded by the 5700 XT. Side by side, you may start to notice the difference, but I won't do the typical 300x super enhanced zoom. Just a simple one is to one comparison is good enough. You immediately see how well the new VNC2 framework performs and preserves details not only in the shadows, but also the darker midtones. Not only am I getting faster encode times now, I'm also getting better encoded files. And seeing that this GPU is directly supported by Apple, I have some very interesting upgrade plans for 2020. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe if you like some PC building video content. 
So until I produce those other two videos on the car, let me know your thoughts on the 5700 XT down in the comments. Let's have a chat. And if you're new around here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press the like button if you like this video. If you are interested in my editing process at all, let me know because I've been wondering if I should be making a video of that kind. If you are interested, uh, throw a comment down there and we'll talk. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.